Welcome back to Inside Sources. Today we're going to have a potpourri of issues and we're going to start with the issue of the protest. And to join me in this discussion, I have uh, a formidable uh, leader in the protest movement, if you can say that in Nigeria. Uh, she was active with the Give, uh, Bring Back Our Girls uh, movement and uh, she's a lawyer and, in, and a human rights activist. I had to work on again, second time, back to Inside Sources. Uh, Ms. Uh, Bukola Shunibari. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. All right, so, so let's talk about this protest. Mm. Um, and I just want to start from, let's start from the end. Mm. What is going to be the outcome of this uh, uh, protest, as it were? Mm. Let, let, mm. Let's start from there, in your own view. How, how, how will, will we know that mm. this protest mm. is successful, that it has mm. helped us to move the nation forward? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I think first is to establish um, why this protest is ongoing um, or why this protest is even starting in the first place, because mm. that helps us to yes, yes, ascertain please. what the end goal is. Please, yeah. And when, when the protest is tagged end bad governance, what it is simply saying is that there isn't good governance in Nigeria. Mm. And bad governance means different things to different people. To the student who is unable to continue school because of increase in school fees, mm. there is bad governance. To the father who watched, you know, um, his daughter die because of, you know, inadequate health care, there is bad governance. To that group of people who have to watch a member of theirs die after being stabbed by, you know, someone on the road of Abuja, there is bad governance. Mm. To the nursing mother who cannot, you know, afford adequate health care for their child, there is bad governance. So bad governance means different things to different people. Mm. And so when there is protest, you know, against bad governance, that says end bad governance in Nigeria, right. what it is saying is that this is the coming together of people who in their own way have been protesting in one way or the other. I've been asking for this thing. When somebody mm. goes to the market right. and they see that something has become quite expensive, they mm. come online or they sit in their groups and they express their frustration. They have been protesting. They've been talking about this thing, but nothing is being done. So what sort of outcome are we going to see to come to your question? It's first the fact that Nigerians would have expressed themselves collectively. Okay. You know, it's one thing when, you know, you see that you can no longer send your child to school or a father who can no longer feed his, his family or the the hardship that is going on and that, that is literally ripping everyone apart and, and i must say that those in leadership that they can afford the life the hardship that we currently face does not mean an average person you know we we're having a conversation the other day and we said that those who used to be in the middle class are now in the poor category so imagine what the category of those who used to be poor what category they have right now mm. that means they are the poorest of the poorest so what is now happening with this and bad governance protest is to say that first we are coming together with one voice to express our grievance against what we have been seeing. Whether we admit it or not, mm. there is hardship in the land. When we say people cannot feed, people cannot feed literally. There are people who have gone 001 or 101 or 000, meaning that you can either have breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You can't afford to have the three. Even those of us who we think that we can afford it, it is no longer as easy. So mm. the collective expression of our frustration is what this end bad governance is going to do. One, two, it is going to serve as deterrence, whether you like it or not. Even mm. before the physical convergence, the protest is already successful. The fact that there has been a lot of attacks, you know, stigmatization, character assassination, mm. you know, deployment of different festivals, including the Oru Festival, to stop <laughs> people, deployment of military, the militarization of civilian action. We've seen how that in itself is causing. So one thing you will see is that we expect that the Nigerian government will no longer treat the issues that people express themselves about. They will no longer treat it the same way, just sweeping it under the carpet. Mm. Nigerians have watched, especially young Nigerians, 
Most of those who are coming out on this issue are young Nigerians. We have over 60% of our population as young Nigerians. Young Nigerians are watching as of March 2024, Nigeria has accumulated debt of over 127 trillion naira as of March of 2024. And so you watch your future literally being sold away and you expect people to just sit down. And so for the child who cannot even, you know, have quality education, you send your child to school primary one to six, the person cannot read basic English. And so that outcome that we expect to see is all of these things. We've been talking about NSAS for years. Mm. NSAS means end police brutality. Is there still police brutality? Yes. The other time we found a pregnant woman who was shot by a police officer in the presence of her husband. That is bad governance. Yet we campaigned, we mm. protested, people were killed as a result of this, and yet that is still happening. So what outcome are we going mm. to see? Is the fact that we have a collective voice, we will express ourselves as required by law, as constitutionally guaranteed, as empowered, and I, yeah. as empowered by the law. Mm. And let, let's talk about the law so that we know that people are not just being no, no, sentimental I, no, we, about we, this we, issue. We'll get to that, you know, um, I, I, and I wanted us to start from the outcome yeah. uh, for a reason, because of course, mm. uh, there are those who are saying, especially those in mm. government, and by the way, mm. Uh, we, we, we wanted this to be a mm. discussion of young people mm. and uh, uh, we had also invited the youth leader of the APC mm. uh, you know, to also join the conversation. Mm. Now, um, um, just like you said, I mean, 60% of our population is, is young people. Mm. A lot of young people are the ones that are involved mm -hmm. in the, mm -hmm. the protest. Mm -hmm. But the other side is arguing that, look, a, a, the, the, the kind of outcome that they are afraid of is the violent outcome. Mm. Uh, which we had, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, so my question to you is that, now I, 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 I'm not sure that you're one of the organizers, but at least I know you're supporting the protest. Mm -hmm. how, 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 how best can this thing be managed from your own point of view to avoid uh, a violent confrontation or a violent outcome? Thank you. Protests don't just end up becoming violent. And each time the government talks about violent protests in Nigeria, they will typically use the NSAS um, protest. The NSAS protest did not set out to be violent. It didn't start to be, to be violent. What happened was there was peaceful protest over a number of days until we started seeing the high-handedness of the government. What were we seeing? We were seeing arbitrary arrests. I remember one of the young boys that was killed there was stigmatization, there was repression, there was all of that was going on. And it was at that point that citizens, you know, now started in their bid to protect themselves. So the NSAS protest did not start out as being a violent protest. So how do we prevent that in this end bad, bad governance? Is first the responsibility of the government to make sure that one, the right to protest is actually protected. And what does that mean? Nigerians have expressed the fact that they want to protest from August 1st to August 10th of 2024. And that expression of protest alone is sufficient to communicate mm. that we should be protected in exercising our fundamentally, our constitutionally guaranteed right. right. So that one, instead of putting forward counter protesters like we have started seeing, bringing women from different parts of Nigeria to come mm -hmm. and counter protest, deceiving women to come together, not knowing that they are going to come. That is completely unnecessary because what you are doing is to pitch one one group of people against the other. Yeah. So once that happened, they will definitely be violent. So this is a message to the government that Nigerians have the right to protest, and it is your responsibility to protect that right to protect, to protest. Yes. Even the Constitution, of course, this right is guaranteed in Section 39 and 40 of the Constitution. Section, section 45 of the Constitution makes provision for derogation of that right. In law, we will say that derogation is when the government or mm -hmm. those who hold the power have the right to not allow you exercise that particular okay. right. 
Um, but that is done within the ambit of specific principles. The principle of making sure that it is reasonably justified in a democratic society. Mm. Reasonability means that any action that you are taking to prevent people from exercising that right, that it is reasonable in a democratic society. And by democr democratic society, we are saying that it should be fair, it should be necessary, so it must meet the principle of necessity. Mm. It must also meet the principle of proportionality. Any measure that you are taking must be proportionate, you know, to the legitimate aim that you seek. And, you know, so making sure that that happens is one way to also um, um, prevent um, violent violence. attack. And thirdly, I, and I remember <laughs> May of 2015, when we're doing the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, because there were people in government who didn't like what we were doing, they mm. saw it as an anti-good luck Jonathan protest. And I remember May of that, of the, we're at the Unity Fountain, right. and we had this group of young men came into the Unity Fountain and they started beating us. They were beating us while we were there. They, were, they stabbed one of us. I remember Moroko, they stabbed him by the side and he kept saying that they have stabbed me, they have stabbed me. Wow. And all we were doing was to exercise our constitutionally guaranteed right to gather, to assemble, to protest, to express our opinion. Mm. But you know the sad reality of that day? As we were being beaten, policemen were standing around and they were watching us being beaten. And so we don't expect that we should have a repeat of mm. that because mm. once that happened, what the, what the Nigerian people will do is to also act back. Nobody will be attacked and just watch themselves being attacked. Mm. They will mm. attack back. And, and, and so I, I expect that the bulk here rests on the part of the government. The body language of the government on one hand is saying that, yes, you have a right to protect, to protest and all of that, but the majority of the actions that we have been seeing, you know, the character assassination, the stigmatization of the protesters, trying to limit it to a particular region of, of Nigeria, trying to discredit the organizers of the protest is completely unnecessary. What you are doing is to make people defensive. And so anything that happens, and those who are organizing in it have said one thing if anyone is killed in the course of this protest you know right now nobody is saying that somebody must go somebody must not go mm. but if that becomes the case then they change the demand and we're just going to set ourselves up for a necessarily elongated period of people protesting mm, and let me, let me say this lastly right nigerians don't just come out to protest Everything that people are going to come, that are coming out, there are things that people have expressed in one way or the other. Mm. And so the government must understand that we have the legitimacy, the right to actually come out collectively to express the way we feel. And it is their responsibility to make sure that in that expression of our right, that we are protected in so doing. Mm. Excellent. To, I, mean, to Buki, say, I think that uh, the, 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 the place where we are in the country today, mm. you know, from my own reading, mm. I, I think uh, attempts to befoddle the rights of Nigerians yeah. to protest, I think that has been exposed mm. for what it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that anybody that is serious mm -hmm. will still be pushing the idea mm -hmm. that you have to get police permission yes. and all of that. However, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, to the point you made about derogation, mm. don't you think that the, the Constitution mm. still empowers the police mm. if in their own judgment mm -hmm. they, they, they suspect that... Uh, there might be violence or that the thing can become riotous, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in which case they do have uh, a responsibility to ensure mm -hmm. that that is prevented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? So that speaks to Section 45 of the Constitution. While Section 39 and 40 guarantees this right, what Section 45 did was to permit the government to limit that right in certain circumstances. Just as an example, during COVID, our you know, right to, to movement was right. constrained right. because there was a national emergency. Mm. And so the government has the right to do that because it serves a legitimate aim. Now, but let's dissect Section 45 a bit to answer this question. Section 45 actually provides that the right to assembly and to right to association can mm. be limited, right? However, it says that it must be reasonably justifiable in a democratic society in the interest of one, defense, mm. two, public safety, three, public order, four, public morality, and five, public health. For COVID-19, it was the public health. None of these five is in place now. 
There is no defense you are trying to, to protect. There is no public safety, and which is where they keep pushing out the word violence, so that in any derogation of the right to assemble or, or, or freely protest, you will say you are mm. trying to protect public well, safety. Well, well, but the, the guidance, permit me to call, close my thought by saying, the guidance has also then been provided in that same law. Mm. Now, whatever you are now doing must be necessary must be proportionate and it must mm. achieve a legitimate aim. So if your aim right. is to prevent people from protesting because you don't like what they are protesting about, that's not a legitimate aim. That's a selfish aim. Okay. So, so, so just so, I mean, and it's good that you're also a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, so you can balance these issues for us. So in Lagos State, you know, uh, a group of, you know, where they didn't describe mm. as thugs mm. have come out to say that, look, if anybody comes out, you know, we're mm. going to beat them up. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't that give the police uh, uh, a responsibility to ensure that that kind of violence uh, doesn't take place? I mean, is that not a grounds for the police to say that, look, I mean, uh, if, if people come out and then they start to beat them, how do, you, how, do you that, that, what, how do you think the police should respond to that? The police should protect the protesters in this case, or the protesters, like somebody, some, some people call it. The case here is the fact that we want to protest is a constitutional, constitutionally guaranteed right. Mm. But you, this group is saying, don't come out to protest. That don't come out to protest is not a constitutionally guaranteed right. It's not anywhere in the Constitution that another group can come to counter. The responsibility of the police in this case is to look at the human right that needs to be protected in this regard, mm. which is the human right, the human right to freely assemble and to freely protest right? right but this group that are coming out what they are doing is violence it is against the constitution it is against principle of morality it is against any sane principle in mm -hmm. a democratic society so the responsibility of the government is to then make sure that protect those who have the constitutional rights to do what they want to do these people who want to infringe on that right protect mm -hmm. us against those people so you can't and, and say that because of that saying that they're going to be violent they're yeah, going to say that yeah. if you come out we're going so, to beat you up yeah, so, so they can't bring in the element of public safety in this regard, regard because what has happened now is the fact that that group does not have any constitutionally guaranteed right to say that people cannot come out to protest, okay. which is a right that has been protected in our constitution. constitution. Okay, final question, uh, 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 Bukola, just because of our time. So uh, some people are saying that, look, Everybody who wants to protest should go to their state. <laughs> what do you say to that? I mean, I mean don't, don't protest in my state. You know, that's what some people are saying, especially in Lagos. Mm -hmm. They are saying mm -hmm. that, look, if you want to protest, how can you find your way mm -hmm. to, your, to your state? How, how do you respond to that? The constitutional right to protest does not give any condition to say that when you want to protest, you should only protest within a particular state, within your state of origin. So it is completely baseless. Section 1, subsection 3 of the Constitution says something, that any law, and in this regard, bringing principles, bringing you know, um, um, actions like this, right. that is against the Constitution, the Constitution shall prevail. Right? And that law or this practice, for instance, is to that extent of its inconsistency, null and void. And so this is a case of saying that what you are advising people to do is null and void. When the Abba Women's uh, March happened in 1929, they were not constrained. If you have watched the Olufumilayo movie, you will notice that people were being mobilized from everywhere. Ijebure, Mosh, Shagam, everywhere. They didn't say just stay in Shagam, just stay somewhere. But what did we do see from that? We saw pre independence you know, the success of that. Many other, Occupy Nigeria, there was mm. no case of saying that only those in Lagos <laughs> should have, um, protest yeah. in Lagos. Bring I, back I, our girls the same thing. Yeah. And every other successful protest yeah. that think, we have I, had I, in I, Nigeria. I, you know, thank you for your point, but I think, uh, you know, why not taking sides in that matter? I mm. think it's the fallout mm. of uh, uh, the answers where a lot of uh, uh, in public infrastructure and mm. even private uh, uh, properties were mm. destroyed in Lagos. Mm. I guess, you know, that may explain mm. it. But thank you so much, you know, for your insight and thank you uh, for, for believing in Nigeria enough to protest. Yes. You know, because the truth of the matter is that uh, if people are protesting, it's because they have nowhere else to go. Yeah. Uh, this is where they know as home mm. and it's important for their voices to be heard. Mm.